New Jersey Transit is in the top five of America's busiest commuter railroads. They're not really known for their accidents, though the ones they had were quite the disaster. This one in particular was no exception. With the sleepy driver at the wheel, a train smashed through one of New Jersey's most historic buildings, leaving many injured and one dead. This is the story of the Hoboken train wreck. It was the morning of September 29th, 2016, and rush hour was in full swing. Trains were going in and out of the famous Hoboken Terminal at this time. One train, due for Hoboken, was train number 1614, a morning local train from Spring Valley, New York, on the Pascack Valley Line. It would leave Spring Valley at 7.23 a.m. and arrive at Hoboken at 8.37 a.m. It consisted of Comet 5 cap car number 6036 with three coaches following behind. Pushing the train was EMD GP40 PHS2B number 4214. Little did the passengers know, this train will traumatize them for the rest of their lives. Things were going smoothly for the most part, with the train doing its usual local run. That was up until the train left Secaucus Junction Station at approximately 8.20 a.m. The train's next stop was Hoboken, due for arrival at 8.37 a.m. The train, as it approached Hoboken, did slow down to a reasonable speed while entering the station at 8 miles an hour, but for an unknown reason, the train sped up to over twice the speed limit. Then, at 8.38 a.m. on track 5, it happened. Train 1614 broke through the barrier blocks, barging into the gigantic concourse, coming to rest at the wall right before the station's waiting area. The cab car sustained major structural damage. The accident caused one death and injured at least 114 other people, including engineer Thomas Gallagher. The Jersey City Medical Center treated 66 people for injuries from the crash, 53 of these were released from the hospital the following afternoon of the crash. The Hoboken University Medical Center treated 23 patients and the Christ Hospital treated one patient. Of these, all but two were released by the evening following the crash. The lone fatality, a woman standing on the platform, was killed by falling debris. The victim was identified as attorney Fabiola Vitar de Crun, a 34-year-old married mother of one and a native of Brazil who had recently moved to Hoboken at the time of the crash. The majority of those injured were passengers on the crash train. Moments later, emergency services arrived on the scene. Initial eyewitness reports indicated that portions of the station roof collapsed, as did part of the roof of the train shed, and that water was spraying from the site of the accident. Major structural damage to the station was reported. Following the accident, rail service to and from Hoboken Station, including PATH train service, was suspended and local buses and ferries, as well as the Metro North Railroad, were cross-honoring NJ Transit train tickets. PATH service was suspended due to fears that the roof of the PATH station, where the derailed NJ Transit train came to rest, might collapse. PATH service into and out of the station was restored at the end of the day as was the Hudson Bergen light rail service in and out of the station. Delays to rail service in the area persisted into the following week. A National Transport Safety Board GO team was sent to the scene, and the Federal Railroad Administration also dispatched investigators. Although injured, the train engineer cooperated with the investigation, and both engineer and the train conductor were interviewed by investigators. The engineer lacked any memory of the accident itself. According to the federal investigators, the engineer felt well rested and was unaware of any mechanical problems in the moments before the accident. Among the other things, the NTSB investigation attempted to determine whether or not positive train control would have prevented the accident. 
The day following the crash, investigators retrieved one of the two train event recorders, black boxes, from the wreckage, but it was unusable. The second black box was successfully recovered in the first week of October of 2016. On October 4th, 2016, FEMA claimed responsibility for what appeared to have been a hijacking of WKTV foreshadowing the disaster, which was under independent investigation by Snopes. FEMA told Snopes that they were conducting cross-nation tests for the EAS test and development message aggregators using lines from various Dr. Seuss books as a placeholder for messages when WKTV's EAS device was mistakenly relaying to the public the messages it received in its testing environment. The chosen verse from Green Eggs and Ham and its proximity to Hoboken was purely coincidental and FEMA had no culpability in the train crash. Two days later, the train was removed from the station area for further investigation. In November of that year, attorney Jack Arsenault said his client, train engineer Thomas Gallagher, suffered from severe sleep apnea which was undiagnosed until after the crash. NJ Transit has a sleep apnea screening program, but despite that, a physical exam in July of that year had cleared Gallagher for duty. Gallagher, aged 48 with 18 years experience as a train engineer, said he had no memory of the crash and was lying on the cab floor when he woke up from the impact. An official briefed on the investigation told the Associated Press under condition of anonymity that the investigation is considering sleep apnea a possible cause for the crash. On February 6, 2018, the NTSB released the probable cause of the accident. The NTSB determined that the engineer's failure to stop was caused by fatigue due to undiagnosed sleep apnea. Contributing to the accident was NG Transit's failure to follow their internal sleep apnea screening guidance to find at-risk workers and refer to them for testing and treatment. NJ Transit failed to identify end-of-track collisions as a hazard despite numerous previous accidents. Additionally, the FRA was cited for their failure to require railroad to screen safety critical workers for sleep disorders. The FRA exempted NJ Transit from installing positive train control at Hoboken Terminal. The NTSB said that PTC could not be relied on to prevent end of terminal accidents. They said the need for other technology to intervene prior to the collision. Hoboken Terminal has the original steel and concrete bumpers from when it was opened in 1907. The bumping post design was identified only for protecting low-speed, unpowered accidents and therefore were insufficient in providing protection without technology to prevent end-of-track collisions. It is believed newer bumpers with hydraulic shock absorbers and sled-like friction shoes would have reduced the impact. Meanwhile, the Associated Press reported Thursday that NJ Transit topped the federal list for railroad accidents and fines. America's third largest commuter railroad has had trains involved in 157 accidents in the last five years at the time of the accident, according to an AP analysis of federal data from January of 2011 through July of 2016. That is three times as many accidents as the largest commuter rail system, the Long Island Railroad. Following the train crash, New Jersey Transit issued new regulations requiring that engineers must be accompanied by at least one other crew member as they pull a train into Hoboken Station. In addition, New Jersey Transit also mandated a reduction in the approaching speed limit into the train station from 10 miles per hour to 5. The Hoboken terminal remained closed until October 10th when tracks 10 through 17 were reopened with a modified service schedule. Full service was not restored until the 17th. Tracks 5 and 6, where the train crashed, remained closed while repairs were carried out. The pedestrian concourse reopened May 24, 2017. Track 6 reopened for service in June of 2017 and Track 5 reopened for service sometime around September of the next year. The planning for permanent repairs to the concourse roof and supports were going on during this time. In a February 2019 statement, NJ Transit stated that permanent repairs and renovations will begin in March and last for approximately one year. In April 2019, NJ Transit stated that all repairs will be completed by the end of 2019, which they succeeded in doing. Today, seven and a half years after the accident, 
Hoboken Terminal has fully recovered and still sees hundreds of departures from all tracks every day. NHA Transit has learned from their huge mistake long ago, but that doesn't change the fact that over 100 people were injured that day, but thankfully, all 114 injured victims made it out alive. Now we know that if you want to be a train engineer but have sleep apnea, you may want to reconsider since NJ Transit no longer allows sleep apnea victims to operate trains and I think it's for the better.